Ball State's 2012 season began as one of great anticipation, a potential breakout off last year's 6-6 six six finish. The junior season of quarterback Keith Wedding, the return of America's most experienced offensive line, a true sophomore yeah, leading rusher. Hit hard at the point of attack, but just keeps going. And some of the best specialists in the country. But there was also great uncertainty, a grueling schedule and a young roster, the loss of last year's two top wide receivers and a defense yet proven. But it didn't take long for many questions to be answered. Dwan Edwards rushed for 200 yards and three touchdowns in the win over Eastern Michigan. The Cardinals posting nearly 600 yards of total offense, running 96 plays, third most in school history, and recording a school record 36 first downs. As Winning takes the snap, hands off Edwards again, wide open across the 45-50, and Edwards is gone. The wide receiver picture became clear, with Jameel Smith racking up a career-high 119 yards while Connor Ryan had a high of six catches, and tight end Zane Fakes finishing with a career best 48 yards. Steven Schott also stretched his leg, laying the groundwork for one of Ball State's best kicking seasons with a career long 52 yarder. The first of many kicks that would set up Schott as a Lou Groza Award semifinalist. With the second of three straight BCS opponents, the Cardinals traveled to Bloomington. A win would mark three straight over the Hoosiers, and Ball State came out Bubbles punching. Screen, and you have to count on your guys up front to not let the corner Patterson sneak through right there. The first sack of the day by either team, and that's Newsom. Still, the Cardinals trailed at halftime, but surprise and stout defense began a 14-0 run. Looks to throw, Smith into the end zone for Webbing, and he's got it with a touchdown! What a catch. Ball State's lead <laughs> held until late, Indiana coming back and leaving the Cardinals with just 49 seconds to respond. Just enough time for Keith Wenning and Steve Schott. To win it for Ball State. Schott's field goal is up and good. And the Ball State Cardinals on the final play of the game have made it three straight wins against the Indiana Hoosiers. But there's no rest returning home. The Cardinals moved on to yet another BCS opponent, this time welcoming the Big East's USF Bulls. Edwards cuts back, lowers the shoulder, gets to the goal line, and barrels his way into the end zone, and the Cardinals are on top. For the second straight week, it came down to the game's closing moments. After leading all day, the Cardinals fell behind with five minutes to play, but so much time for Keith Wenning and the Cardinals' offense to respond. Winning steps up, throws the deep ball for Snead. Did he get it? Oh my, what a catch by Willie Snead in the corner. A coming out party for wide receiver Willie Snead. 11 catches, 135 yards. Two weeks later, he'd be added to the Bolitnikoff watch list, recognizing the top receivers in the nation. But the game had time left still. Looking to his left. Miscommunication, he will be picked off. Florida native Eric Patterson sealing the victory with an interception. The win marking Ball State's fourth ever over a BCS foe, the first against an opponent other than IU. At three and one, the Cardinals had made an early statement. With six games remaining, the Cards faced four on the road and matchups still with traditional MAC powers, Toledo and Ohio. The first challenge ahead though, Western Michigan. Fake handoff from the back of the end zone, looks to throw, he's going deep. Wide open, Willie Snead, got it at the 40. Dance is open at the 45 to the 50. He's dragged down. And that took some gusto to go for the home run. Backed up with nowhere else to go. And the Cardinals played what might be one of the crazier fourth quarters in recent football memory. Touchdown! Touchdown! Jameel Smith. Again, empty backfield for Van Tuber again. Throws intercepted! and then lost. Who's got it? Western Michigan falls out. And we go to overtime. Ball down, kick on the way, kick is no good. First and 10 from the 15, winning. 
Hands off Edwards, who runs up the middle of the field. He lowers his shoulder. Ten on his feet. Five into the end zone. And Ball State has won homecoming. Juwan <laughs> Edwards just moved the pile and kept on going. On the road next at Central Michigan, the Cardinals proved their dominance both on the ground and in the air of Kelly Shorts Stadium. For a time, Juwan Edwards and Barrington Scott both eclipsed the 100-yard plateau, finishing with 128 and 99 yards respectively. Looking to pass, has Scott in the flat. He hurls it to the running back. Touchdown, Ball State. Keith Wedding also racked up three passing scores. And with 231 yards, the QB passed Mike New for second all-time in school history and passed Talmadge Hill for second all-time in total yards. The Cardinals' defense also rose up at Mount Pleasant, forcing a pair of key turnovers. Snap, Ratcliffe won at Lavalli, and he's brought down. Chase ball is loose. Brandon Newman, Nathan Ali picks it up, and the big man's off to the races, but caught at the 40-yard line. And picking up a season-high four sacks. Radcliffe back to throw, and there's Tony Martin on the blitz. He gets him wrapped down at the 16-yard line. The win was Ball State's fifth, opening the door for bowl eligibility the next week at Army. The hallowed grounds of West Point, the United States Military Academy hosted the Cardinals against Army's unique triple option offense. It was Ball State, however, flexing both its offensive and defensive That's muscle in the first. Say, hey, we've been making stops and getting guys off the field and they do it again as they'll come up a yard shot inside and took a shot up high from Nick Miles. But there was no lack of fight in the Army. The Cardinals led just 2013 heading into the fourth quarter, but Ball State rallied to collect cushion, scoring twice to help salt away victory number six. Wedding's got all day, fires into the corner. Up, oh, did he get his feet down? Yes! Remember, in 2011, six wins were not enough to secure a coveted bowl bid. So hungry for more, the Cardinals traveled to 23rd ranked Toledo for an election night duel. And unfazed by the glass bowl, Ball State cast the game's the first vote. he goes, touchdown, Ball State, Jameel Smith. But nobody just walks into the glass bowl. The home of five Toledo wins over top 25 opponents, the Rockets battled back to a 17-17 halftime deadlock. It was just too close to call. And after being gashed by Toledo running back David Flewellen for 152 yards in the first, Ball State's defense answered the bell in the second. Flewellen looking for that block, and the ball came loose. Ball is loose, and it is scooped up. Tony Martin, here he goes, trying to get past the quarterback, and a great return inside the 15-yard line, and oh, how quickly things can change. Toledo was ranked for a reason, though. Still fighting for a 27-20 fourth quarter lead, but one quickly erased by the cards, setting up once again a thrilling finish. Owens, he looks that way and it's incomplete. <laughs> Owens thought he had it. I could not believe it. And we've got ourselves a tied game. Flewellen stacked up. It's going to depend on the spot. I don't know that he got it, Des. Not even close. Not even close. Turnover on downs. They keep it on the ground on third and nine, and they get it. Past midfield goes Jawan Edwards. 149 to play. Jawan Edwards to the edge, inside the 10. Touchdown, Ball State. The W was Ball State's first over a ranked opponent since 2001, and the first four game win streak since 2008. Keith Wenning also tied Nate Davis on Ball State's career completions list, helped by a career best seven receptions from junior Connor Ryan. With one ranked win under their belts, the Cardinals look to take down a formerly ranked team in Ohio the next week. Back home for senior night and donning black jerseys for the first time in school history. A back and forth shoving match broke out, resulting in just one combined incomplete pass in the first quarter. Big touchdowns by Kevon Mavon and Willie Sneed acted as the Cardinals' right hooks. Now a screen play. 
And a run into the middle of the field, breaking free is Willie Sneed for a touchdown. Sneed's day gave him a thousand yards on the year. Combined with Juwan Edwards, Ball State became just one of four teams nationally with a thousand yard rusher and receiver. Sneed also becoming the first thousand yard wide receiver for Ball State since 2007. But the scoring was hardly over. Trailing 17-14 before halftime, Ball State dug out an old familiar trip. Smith thinking about throwing, back to Wedding. Keith Wedding went up and got it in its first in The second time Jimmy L. Smith completed a pass to Keith Wedding during the year. But an awkward fall pulled Ball State's starting quarterback, entering fifth year senior Kelly Page. Next man in, next man rises up. And he pulls it off of the zone read and will walk in. How about that start for Kelly Page? 6'3", 230, and they napped on him as he faked it to Banks. With an assist from the ground game two, running backs Juwan Edwards and Horatio Banks became the first BSU pair over 100 yards rushing since Corey Sykes and Quail Lewis against Eastern Michigan three years prior. 588 yards of offense later, the Cardinals had their fifth most productive day in school history, and Ball State's 52 points were its most since 2006. Freshman making a cut for a first down and more. Banks is in! Touchdown, Ball State! The Cardinals, however, sustained their fair share of hurt in the Ohio victory, the team's eighth. Quarterback Keith Wenning, wide receiver and return man Jameel Smith, Offensive lineman Jordan Hansel and safety Brian Jones would all not play in the regular season finale at Miami. Ball State filled the gaps well though and route to victory number nine, a plateau hit for just the sixth time in school history. Relying heavily on the ground, the Cards amassed 226 yards rushing, led by Edwards, Banks, and Kelly Page, the backup quarterback making his first start since 2010. Page was 11 of 12 through the air for a touchdown too, until he also sustained an injury. One of a handful of Cardinals hurt at Oxford. Scott Secor will kick off into the wind for the first time today, and it is an onside kick. It's a Ball State football. Battling biting cold and staunch winds, the Cardinals cut through the elements to score 10 more points after Page's departure for a 31-14 lead. Miami, though, found a fourth quarter groove, rallying and clawing within a touchdown and forcing Ball State to punt with 30 seconds left. But Scott Cavanda crushed a kick into the wind, and Ball State won the game. Fair caught, bobbled, fumbled, and Ball State has it at the 12. Cruz, the rushing totals caught. gave Ball State its seventh game over 200 yards. Juwan Edwards moved into third place all time in single season rushing with 1,321 yards, and his three touchdowns marked his fourth career game of the kind. The trip to South Carolina was a landmark day for punter Scott Cavanda, booming his season best 56 yard punt while downing three kicks inside the 20. The start of what would become a Ray Guy Award finalist of a season. Wow, Scott Cavanda, look at him hang that high. One on the road to take on Kent, Keith Wenning tied the single game mark with five touchdown passes. He was second with 444 yards. Sneed's 14 receptions, also ranked second in Ball State lore, garnering him 216 yards. Winning, gonna go to the corner route for Willie Sneed. He made a terrific grab. Touchdown, Sneed. And on defense, graduate transfer Brandon Newman wound up with his first career interception. That great, Spencer Keith will keep the football. That's live. That football is live. Intercepted. And Ball State has got the sudden change turnover.
number nine in the books, and with it, one of the most successful regular seasons Muncie's ever seen.